Hi, my name is Kevin and welcome back to the breakdown series. There have been a lot of talks recently in Tarkov when it comes to playstyles. Are you a rat, a chat, a honey badger, a squirrel, an ostrich or maybe a birdly? I don't think we should confine ourselves to these arbitrary boxes. Tarkov does not care who or what you are. You will suffer. And by playing a little smart you can severely increase your odds of making someone else suffer more than you do yourself. So you win. Such is the life of a Tarkov player. In this entry, I'll try my best to return to the roots of this series, using cheap weaponry and killing your opponents by outsmarting them. With that said, if you are looking to learn and improve your Tarkov PvP game by outsmarting, I highly recommend checking out the other entries to the series. Playlist is in the description. The links to my stream, the socials and our community discord can also be found there. So make sure you smash all of those links, smash your thumbs on this video, Smash the subscribe and smash the follow on the Twitch to make sure you stay up to date with all of my content. I mean who doesn't like to smash? I like to smash people in Tarkov, preferably with super cheap guns. This episode will focus around the Ketter. You can get the unsuppressed version for about 15k rubles on the flea market, while the suppressed one goes for about 30k. They are also sold by proper level 1 and level 2 respectively. The Ketter is extremely lightweight at under 2 kilograms, features a fire rate of 900 RPM and can take 30 round mags. I pair mine with SP7 ammo. They are the most lethal since the 9x18 caliber by nature is extremely poor at penetrating armor. So you might as well fully spec into flash damage and go for lag meta. This means that if you are not able to land a face hit, for example when your target has their back turned to you or is using a visor, you should go for the legs. The legs are always unprotected and have the biggest multiplier for damage done to them while blacked out. It's extremely effective and trust me, so much fun. The whole idea of running a kit like this from being extremely cost effective and being disadvantaged because you cannot spray Santa Mass through any armor, I believe teaches you to play more with your head. It will punish bad positioning, it will reward planning, ambushing and overall teach you better habits to be able to become a better Tarkov player all round. And with the recent changes to carry weight, strength and endurance, I believe we now have truly entered the era of the SMGs. The setup has never been better before. Anyway, let's dive into the clips. We'll start off at the reserve where we get into a fight that is not necessarily looking too good for us. So here's a guy who probably heard us coming up and is waiting. It's not such a great place to be sitting because he has a, just about as much cover as we do. Zero. Notice how he has a face shield and at this point in the wipe it's not uncommon for people to do so. Our ammo will not be able to penetrate his face shield but his legs are looking very good as he's clearly showing them off to the world. We focus on the kneecaps to bring him down. He's basically begging for it. <laughs> Lol. Just as I'm about to heal up, I see something more important. A graphics card. So we cancel this heal animation with the click of the left mouse to deal with the most urgent matter first. You gotta set priorities in life and to me, a graphics card is definitely one of them. <laughs> G-mate. You missed a graphics card by the way. <laughs> Oh man. I've never seen anybody wait there before. It's uh, I can dig, it's uh, original. We need to get some heals in, so I look for a place that covers most of my angles. Since it's very early on in the raid, we still want to keep our eyes and ears open to listen if more people come here, because this server room is pretty high traffic. But wait, there's more. You'll learn these high traffic areas over time or by looking up some loot guides on YouTube. These are pretty well known at this point though. They are great places to loot but also the PvP because it's basically a given that people will flock in. Let's see if they come up, probably. I've heard someone else around so we take it slow and see if they come to us. I'm guessing that they will want to come here for loot and might be unaware that we've just murdered a man's legs in here. Maybe not. I heard a guy run, but... Oh fuck! We got super lucky not to get our head blown off right here. Judging from the sound and the basic knowledge of this area, I know exactly where this guy is. 
He's in the window overlooking the server room, one floor up. By hiding behind these cabinets, or whatever they're called, I know we break line of sight from him and he'll have to spend time to come down and get us. This is where the rat taunts the kitty when he knows it can't get him. Make sure to do this whenever you can, and if you're feeling extra ballsy, even throw in a dicky needles. Oh, what are you gonna do now, boy, huh? Alright, the ammo is the RGO 28. I was using the RGO ammo before, and at 65 flash damage per round, it's not a bad pick. But with the help and knowledge of the community, I have learned that the SP7 is the most preferable with 77 flash damage. Other good options would be the PSV with 69 flash damage or the SP8 with 67 flash damage, depending on your budget and ammo availability. If you had a nade, I think he would have already tossed one. Don't think he has one. So I'm just gonna disrespect this ass and heal out here. <laughs> Fuck, I need a splint. I don't give a shit. Yes, yes, kill each other. <laughs> yes, yes. Fantastic. Thank you, third party. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so the RGO 28, uh, it shreds, man. It shreds legs, dude. Pretty cool. I'm about to run out and close the distance and engage in a very risky fight. If he's still in the window and not wearing a face shield, we might be able to land a cheeky face hit and send him back to the Shadow Realm. But we'll need to close the distance first. We run out and zigzag the best we can to make it as difficult as possible for him to land a shot on us. And there he is, still in the same window. We peek, get some quick shots off and see if we can land a face hit before diving back into cover. This fight is not one in our favor and when you compare height and exposure, he has the high ground and is only exposing his head where we are easily shot at and are exposing much more of our body. Never re-peek from the same angle. How, did, how are you still alive, man? Well, he's alive because she didn't land a hit on the face, uh, Kevin from the past. I'm starting to get a little bit cocky here and thirsty for the skill. I should honestly be relocating now and not stand in a predictable place and wasting nades trying to thread the needle. Bro. Oh no. Thankfully, this nade is a recent development in nade technology. This one is a prototype that has a built-in automatic friendly fire detection system and will know not to blow up if it lands near its thrower. Thanks, science. He's running away. I just burned through all of my ammo. Oh, he's still here. I don't know if any nades anymore, it kind of blows. I've just heard him go prone. I don't know where. Take back the nade? No, he's still here. Upstairs. What the f... Bushes. So with this guy prone, possibly upstairs, my new possible threat in this instance shifts to the bushes on my left. There might be a guy coming in and it's way more immediate than the guy upstairs. A possible way up is to take this metal staircase, but it will make a lot of noise. It's also possible to go through the hole in the wall on my right, just outside of my view. 
There are bathroom tiles that will make a lot of noise, so unless I sneak crouch through them, it's possible that he'll hear me move. I really don't want to sneak crouch in this area because it's so high traffic, and especially not now with the potential threat coming in from my left. He might catch me and just shoot me in the back. So right now, in my opinion, it's the best call to just hold this position and see and hear what happens with the others. Probably not unwise for me to lay, lay low here for a minute. I know this guy is still there. I want to grab the guy I killed before. I'm not sure if he ran away. You think this guy is gonna come down? Maybe he ran for the stairs. He's probably eyeballing that loot as well from the guy. There we go. He's coming. I know he's coming up and I'm fairly confident in my positioning. No matter what happens, I'm gonna have a taste of those legs when he shows. I want to decrease my posture as much as I can, but still be able to move, so I toggle my sneak mode with the caps lock when I'm set. This way when he comes, I'll be able to quickly jump up and move about. <laughs> and the rat strikes again. Too late to save the lag. Oh boy. I'm taking a bit of a gamble here, switching to his Vel and not checking the mag. I don't know how many bullets there are still in it, and I don't wanna risk giving my position away by doing a mag check, which can be easily heard by my opponent. I do a fire mode check by holding down the left alt and pressing B. This is very quiet, so I feel comfortable doing so. Reason for switching to the Vel is because my cater is almost entirely dry, and I'm not sure how many rounds are still in the current mag. The Vel will deal more heavy damage against armor because it uses more powerful rounds, so in this moment I think it's my best bet. Wait, do you have a moment? I was kinda lucky that he stepped out there. So here we do the squirrel thing again by dropping our backpack, then taking his stuff and sorting it out in our little squirrel stash. Which is of course a lot more protected from predators. Hey Chester, thank you for the biddies mate. Here. Sorry you got scammed again. In the interest of time, I'll show you the loot from the two other guys we killed and fast forward to the end of this raid where the action picks up again. The player's calf didn't even notice the body on the, uh, on the door. If the guy in the window is still there, then GG, dude. You've earned me. Hey, mind trick. GG, man. No CMS. Great. Hey, it's a book. We never found a CMS kit on them, so it was time to start moving out. 
We got some like, greedy goblin. We hit up some safes before making our way to the extract. And we end up paying for it in the weirdest way. Need to have a new painkiller, man. Alright. Let's go in then. You know we are gonna die now because of greed, right? You know this, chat. So without knowing it, while putting down the face shield, I accidentally fat fingered the fire mode toggle button. What? Oh, that switched to single fire. This is a classic case of bad positioning. I should be moving forward, either on the first floor or on the second, whilst patching up, instead of going back on the staircase, which I'm doing now. They will know where to point their barrels from peeking the corner, and I'll be right there. This is a big mistake, and this is gonna cost. One slip of the finger. One bad decision in positioning. Welcome to Tarkov, mate. It's been kinda quiet. Did it load into offline again? <laughs> I actually loaded up in offline by accident today. We had someone ask, how do you... Go uh, like I wanted to show how you, how you load into offline mode, right? So I, I clicked on the thing. Show them. For anyone who is still wondering why I never run the blue laser myself and love it when others do. His laser just saved our life. So far. Nice blue laser bro. I don't want to push this guy head on so we toss a nade to create a barrier for retreat. We flank. Let's see if you can buy time go around. You really want to flank with these kind of kits as much as you can. It's good talk of practice in general honestly. This floor is made up entirely of wood and will be very loud. So we have to do the sneak crouch thing all the way to the end. This takes forever, but it does give me the ability to listen out for any of his movement with my gun at the ready. Is he holding the angle? Oh, come on, chat. Not this time. <laughs> Please. I wanted to show some more clips about the gather in this episode, but it was already getting kinda lengthy from the first raid, where I wanted to show all the interesting bits from a red game. Hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something. Thanks for watching, as always. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to leave a like and a follow. I poke fun about it in the intro with the smashing and stuff, but uh, it does really help out the channel. So come say hi on the Twitch. I'll be there. Stay safe out there. Don't go outside. Listen to Arnold and his goats. Just play video games. Bye. <laughs> GG, dude. Oh, nice. Look, he has a teammate. Actually, I don't know if he has a teammate. He has stuff, though. 